Hello everybody, ni hao. Welcome back to another episode. Today is going to be a little different than the content that I usually do. So for those of you who are new to my content, I'm a journalist that lives in a country in Africa and I write about China, Africa, and technology. And as a companion to a lot of my work, I also put out short documentaries on the same subject. So for example, last week I did a documentary on electric vehicles in Africa that were brought in by a China-based company. So today's video was inspired by a question that I was asked by a friend when we were chatting a few weeks ago and my friend asked me how I stay on top of the news that's happening throughout the African continent on any given day. Now I want to say that even though I'm a journalist, it's not like I sit around every single day and pour through every newspaper or every news publication throughout the African continent. As a journalist, it's really important to maximize your time and to be able to find good stories and to tell them and put them out quickly. So one life hack that I've developed is subscribing to newsletters. A newsletter is basically a daily or weekly blast that, get, that goes to your email that's put out by publications online that gives you a rundown of their most important stories. They can be really good because a lot of publications are paywalled, which means that in order to access their stories, you have to pay to access them. So newsletters do a really good job of providing you a preview of the most important news that you can then research on your own to find out more about. So this video today is going to be about the four newsletters that I subscribe to to stay in tune with the news in Africa. So the first newsletter that I'm going to recommend is The Conversation. The Conversation is a really cool platform that focuses on Africa news specifically and they focus on tailored analysis about the news in Africa. The one thing that I really love about The Conversation is that they have a lot of African female journalists that write for their platform and you'd be surprised but that's something that's really hard to find even in the continent, especially for platforms that are targeted to a international audience. The other cool thing about the conversation is that they distribute their newsletter not just via email but also via WhatsApp bulletin. So if you text their phone number right here via WhatsApp, you can get a bi-weekly news blast sent to your WhatsApp. And in order to subscribe to it, all you have to do is text their WhatsApp number on WhatsApp and say subscribe. And you're automatically subscribed to it and you get their news straight to your WhatsApp, which I think is awesome. The second newsletter that I'm going to recommend is Quartz Africa's Africa Brief. Now I'm not just recommending Quartz Africa because I used to write for them. I did used to write for them and I do really respect them as a platform, but I'm, right, I'm recommending Quartz Africa because they are one of the few platforms that offer really good business journalism that focuses on Africa. And I really think Quartz Africa is a great platform to access more niche topics that you won't find anywhere else about business that's going on in Africa. Whenever I want to learn about a startup or I want to start researching a startup, I'll go to Quartz Africa first. Now the bad thing about Quartz Africa is that their subscription can be a little bit a little bit expensive. So that's why subscribing to their newsletter is really great. And I think they do a bi-weekly or a daily newsletter that's free to subscribe to, of course, and provides a rundown of all of their best stories on their platform. So I definitely recommend Quartz Africa as a newsletter to subscribe to. The next newsletter that I'll recommend is, I will say my absolute favorite, and it's also a newcomer to the newsletter scene, and that's Foreign Policy's Africa Brief. Okay, so Foreign Policy is just a great publication in and of itself. They offer beautiful, in-depth analysis and really, really great journalism that focuses on the world at large. But I will say that in recent years, I felt that their Africa coverage was lacking. But for some reason, in 2021, they decided to really, really ramp up their Africa coverage and to kind of roll this out and promote it, they've done a Foreign Policy Africa Brief. The Foreign Policy Africa Brief has been one of the biggest tools for me in journalism in recent months. So one thing that Foreign Policy does is that they don't just put out their newsletter assuming that you understand the history behind a lot of the topics that they brush up on. So they'll put out the newsletter and let's say the newsletter is talking about the war in Ethiopia. They won't just talk about the war in Ethiopia, they'll also talk about the history behind the war. So my feeling is that they provide you with a little bit more background information than a lot of other publications that kind of assume that you already know what's going on. So if you're new to African news or you've just never been to Africa in general and you want to know what's going on, 
on throughout the continent. I think FP is a great way for you to kind of develop a more in-depth understanding and to learn how to explain a lot of the things that are going on here in the news. So definitely subscribe to the FP Africa Brief. So the last newsletter that I'm going to recommend is one of my personal favorites. And once again, it's not just because I've written for them before, but that's the China Africa Brief from the China Africa Project. So the China Africa Project offers amazing news and analysis about China and Africa. And for those of you who are like, well, why should I care about China and Africa? It's one of the most important topics of the 21st century. And if you don't understand what's going on now, you'll regret it. So you definitely have to subscribe to their newsletter. They have two versions of their newsletter. One newsletter that is for free to everyone. So you subscribe to it and it's free. And then they also have a paid newsletter. And I think for the subscription, I forget how much it is per year, but it's definitely worth it. The China Africa Project newsletter is really great for learning about the global south as well. So they don't just focus on Africa. Recently they've expanded to the global south, which includes countries like India. So if you're interested in what's happening between China, Africa, and India, or China and India, it's also a great resource for that and I definitely recommend it. Okay everybody, there you have it. Those are the four newsletters that I subscribe to to kind of stay abreast on the news in Africa. I've put subscription links to those newsletters in the description box if you want to subscribe to them. And I also want to do a video later on about local platforms that I read to stay abreast on news in specific African countries. I'm gonna wait on that one a little bit because I do think that some of those platforms, as with a lot of plat news platforms, have biases and I want to kind of tease out the bias and advise clearly on how you should read those platforms with that bias in mind. Until then, I hope that you start reading more news in Africa because it's a wonderful continent where a thousand things are happening on any given day and it's the future. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye!